Hi guys, thanks for joining me on Making with Marilyn. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a two-layer pair of earrings in Cricut Design Space. Now, my back layer is going to be cut out of black suede, and my top layer is going to be cut out of a baby leopard print cork. So, I think they're going to turn out really adorable, but it is going to take a little work to design these. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Shapes. And I want to select the triangle. Now with this triangle, unless you unlock it, no matter how small or large you make it, it's going to have the same proportions. So I'm going to click the unlock. And then I'm going to start with a height of about four inches. Now, don't worry, my earrings are not going to be four inches tall. For now, I'm going to start with an inch in width. And so this is the base of my earring. I'm going to go ahead and make this larger so that we can see it a little bit better. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of some of this really pointy area. You would not be able to get the loop of a fish hook through these or even a jump ring through these unless your jump ring was really, really large. I want to have a more rounded top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a shape. I'll click on circle. And then I'm going to make my circle point, point 0.2 inches. I'll also go ahead and turn it a different color so it's easy to work with, easy to see where we are. Because what we're going to do is we're going to lay this circle right on top of this triangle. I'll go ahead and make it even larger. So I want to move it down so that when I slice this out, it's going to look really, really smooth and nice. And you'll see what I mean. Okay. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of those shapes and then I'll go up to a line, center horizontally, and so my pink circle should be in the exact center of this part of the triangle. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select both shapes again. When you have two shapes selected, you can do what's called slice. And let me show you what that does. It basically acts like a cookie cutter. So I'll click slice. Now, if I turn off the view of these two little circles, you can see what it did there. It basically cut out a circle and it left the rest. This is still one image. I would click on it and drag it around but I don't want to move it because eventually I want to put my gray circle back and then weld it to the bottom part of my triangle. I'll hide that for now. Now to get rid of this cone up here, I'm going to click on shapes again. I'll pick a square. Let's make that square a lot smaller. An inch will be fine. Okay. So I'm going to move this square over the top of what I want to go away. I'll select both shapes, and then I can slice. So now I just want to select everything up here that I want to get rid of, and I can click the X to delete it. Now what I can do is uncover the eyeball so that the circle, the gray circle, is back in view. And it makes a nice rounded top. If I were not to weld it back, the Cricut would cut on this line right here. So we're going to select both of those, click Weld, and there we go. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and click on this pink slice result. And on my computer, I'm just hitting delete. I'll get rid of that. Now, notice it's not perfect 
right here. Really, that's not going to be a big factor. But if yours doesn't look real smooth, one thing that you can do is you can try to cover over it with a shape and then select slice again or hit the slice button again. So let me change my square to pink. Makes it easier to work with. Now it can get a little tricky because the black around the pink makes it kind of hard to tell exactly where the, the square is. But what I'm going to do is tilt it just a little bit I can always undo this if I mess it up. So notice right here it's not super smooth. So I'm going to put a little bit of my square over that area. I think this will get it, but we'll see. I might have to move it just a little bit more to the left. Select both shapes. Click Slice. Now if I pull it away, let's see if it smoothed it out. Not so much. Let me move it a little bit closer. Now let's see if I get close enough this time. Okay, I can see a little bit in this pink, so I think so. Yes. So it chopped out, it chopped out or sliced out just a little bit right there. I think that looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. Whoops, I don't want to do that. Let me just move this over. So I'll go ahead and highlight what I want to get rid of and click the X. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So now the height of our earring is down to 3.34 inches. And I want it to end up somewhere around 2.75. The next step to making this earring is to once again click on the square. I change it colors each time just to make it easier to see, easier to work with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on an angle. Make it where you can see everything. I need to turn it to where I like it. Basically, once you slice, whatever you see in gray here, or black, whatever that is, is what the shape of your earring is going to be. I want my angle to be a little bit more extreme. Okay, so I like that. I'm going to go ahead and slice it. Then I want to select this and see how big it is. Okay, it is 3.11. I want it a little bit smaller than that. So I'm just hitting the back until I can redo that. I'll move it up. I'm going to move it up one more time. Select both shapes. Click Slice. Move this away. Okay, 2.77. Perfect. I really wanted about 2.75. 2.77 will do. And now the widest part of what is being me measured in this rectangle is 0.79. So at this, this area right here should be at least three quarters of an inch, which is what I was kind of going for. So I like that. I just play around with it until I get it really to where I want it. I'm going to highlight everything that I don't want and delete it. So this is the back layer of our earring. Now, some people like the Cricut to slice the holes in their earrings. I'm not going to have the Cricut slice mine, but I am going to add a hole in case I want to in the future. So I'll click Shape, Circle. I know that I like my hole punched at about 0.08. I'm going to turn it a different color so that I can see it. I want the circle really close to the top. 
Now, you would think that you could select both of these and click Align and then Center, but since it's an off shape, I don't think that's going to work. Let's see. Yes, see, it's really, it's at the center of this rectangle. It's not in the center of my design. So I'm going to select both shapes, click Slice, move my earring out of the way, and just get rid of these two layers that are left. Now, let's say I want to send this to the maker, but I don't want the whole cut. All I have to do is I have my shape selected, click on Contour. This is an awesome feature. Contour. I can just click on this and it will hide that cut. So let me X out of that and you see that cut's gone. But in the file, it is still there. For now, I'm going to keep it. So there's the first layer. For the second layer, I'm just going to duplicate that layer. My front layer is going to have black, brown, tan, a little bit of gold. So for now, I'm going to turn that to brown. Now, I want this to be a lot shorter than this, but it's actually going to face the opposite way. It's going to shape, it's going to face this way. So it'll be like this, but I'm going to make it shorter so that it hangs kind of up here. So to determine the height, there's two ways you could do it. The first way you could do it is you could just select the image and you could adjust it like that. But let me show you, when you put this on top of your other one, it's a lot skinnier. Your hole just became a different size. It would be extremely hard to punch in this small of an area up here. So that's really not the way I'm going to do it. I'll go back until we get it where it was. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to, once again, take a square. The first thing I'll do is I will get the square to the right angle. So I'm going to compare the square to the bottom of this earring. It's close, so that would be okay, but let me move it just a little bit more. Okay, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to just move up on top of this earring. I'll select my earring and the square. I'll click Slice. And then I'm going to see if I like the height of this. Okay, I don't. I don't. I want it to be shorter than that. Just a little bit shorter than that. So I'm going to go back, undo the slice, and then I'm going to move my square up just a little bit. Again, select both shapes, click Slice, and then fit it on there and see if you like it. Okay, I do like that a whole lot more. I didn't want it to end right here, right here on this corner. I guess it's a corner even though it's not a right angle. And so I like the way it is there much better. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the extra that I don't need. Then I will select both shapes, click Duplicate, and then I don't want my two earrings going at the same angle. I want them to be a mirror image of each other. So I will click Flip Horizontal. And there you go. You have your set of earrings. Now you could either wear them like that. Your face would be in the middle. I guess it'd be up here and have the angles on the outside or when you put them on if you want to do it where your face is in the middle here and the angle is more toward your face or your chin 
that would work. It won't matter because you can just put them on the ear that you want them on. Now something I think might be cute, a very similar style. Let me go ahead and duplicate these. Something I think might be cute is if you took your brown layer and we unlock it. Let's make it just a little bit wider. Instead of 0.64, let's see what 0.75 would look like. Now it's going to be wider than the other one at the top, but that doesn't matter. It's going to cover over the back, and the back is plenty big. So we could do it like this, and that way, instead of just almost being exactly the same, it kind of hangs over the side. I like that. So I'm going to get rid of the left side of that. I'm going to duplicate this and then I'll flip it horizontally. There we go. So very, very similar, but a slightly different look. So I think for today, I'm actually going to make them like this. This is what I set out to do, but I'm going to make these. So what I need to do is select these two brown pieces and just turn them a different color so that they don't try to cut when I send this project to my maker. And then I'll change that. These will be wild looking. <laughs> So the last thing that I want to do before I send this to my maker is I want to go ahead and contour out the holes for all four layers. Okay, so those are reserved in case I want to use them in the future, but for now, I'm just going to punch my own. So let's go ahead and send this to the maker. It's going to have four mats because I have four different colors. Again, I am not going to cut out this blue mat or the purple mat. I will cut out the brown mat. That will be my cork. And then the black mat, that will be my black suede. I'm going to go ahead and start with the black suede. I want to move these over a little bit. I'm going to place them on here so that I know that they're going to cut a little more than an inch down from the top and a little more than an inch over from the right. I am putting a little bit of space in here. I know that might seem like a waste, but I have found with my limited experience with suede, very, very limited so far, that it is difficult to work with, especially the suede that I have. Maybe there are suedes that are thinner and less dense and a lot easier to work with. But the suede I have, which I really love it, it's nice thick suede. I got it as a remnant bag at Hobby Lobby, and you get a ton of it for a really good price. And it's really nice quality, but it is harder to work with. So I'm going to have those spread out just a little bit. I'll click Continue. Now, if you saw my prior video on suede, I had three fails. And I started with suede and then I added more pressure to it and then I went to a heavy garment leather. That still didn't work and so I ended up going with tooling leather. So I'm going to back out of this but I do want you to see they have fake suede, faux suede, Cricut brand faux suede, and then suede. I did not have success using those. The one that I had this success with was this tooling leather, the six to seven ounce. So I'm going to select that. I'll click done. Now it wants me to make sure my star wheels are out of the way. And then I'll need to put my knife blade in clamp B. And then I can go ahead and load my material to cut. So let me go ahead and turn the camera around and we'll keep working. Now the first thing that I want to do is to prepare my mat for the suede. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some Cricut Strong Grip tape, transfer tape. 
I usually just use clear contact paper or white contact paper, but with suede, it's harder to work with, so I just want a little bit of a stronger tack. So I have that placed down. Here's my suede. Both sides are the same. So I need to make sure I have it at least above the one inch mark and to the left of the one inch mark on the side. Give that a really good pressing with your brayer or whatever you use. And then the last thing I'll do is I will also use some of this super hold scotch tape and tape around the edges. Again, I'll just give that a really nice firm pressure. The other thing is I don't really want tape to be where I'm going to cut, so that's why I stayed so far out. Now you might recall that it said we needed the knife blade. This is my knife blade. See the blade sticks really far out, very sharp. So I'll go ahead and drop that in. The other thing it said to make sure the star wheels wouldn't go over your leather, or the suede in this case. So let's go ahead and send this to cut. And we'll see what we get. So now that the machine is finished cutting that, on my screen I have two options. It says check your cut, and if it looks good, you unload your material. If it needs to be cut more, then you hit the C button again. But I'm just going to take mine out and hope for the best for this video. And if it doesn't cut all the way through, I really want to know that, and I want you to be able to see that as well. What I have found that sometimes in the corners you need to just barely snip some of the fabric that just didn't get cut all the way through. But it really, it's just kind of hanging on by a thread is what I've found. So before we pull this off, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my second mat for my cork. Here's my cork. Now this will stain your mat. So it doesn't leave a lot of things on your mat, but as far as fibers go, but it will stain your mat. So I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of contact paper down. This is just white contact paper. I originally bought it to use it as transfer tape, and then I realized since it's white, you can't see through it. It doesn't really make a very good contact, or I'm sorry, transfer tape. So I'll put that down, and then I'm going to go ahead and place this pretty side down. Give it a nice braying. And then because my mat is old and not real sticky, I am going to adhere this down to the mat. Now when I change my cut setting for this, it's going to ask me to put in my fine tip blade. So let me go ahead and take this blade out. You want to make sure this one's clean, just press out the blade and clean any fibers that might be on it. I clean mine each time I take it out, so there shouldn't be any. Now we have that ready. I need to go ahead and change my cut settings. So give me just a minute to do that. Now I move my design, so again it would cut about an inch down and an inch over. And then on my cut settings I selected faux leather paper thin. I found that to work well with the cork. So let's go ahead and load the mat. Let it do its magic. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn that off, move that out of the way. Now 
Now I'm going to go ahead and move my camera down just a little bit. So let's see what we got with this. With this cork, I just am never disappointed. It cuts so well. Now you will see, see the dark spots there. That's what I was talking about. It will stain your mat, so that's why I put something under it. I didn't the first time, and it made a mess of my mat. Okay, now the fun part. Let's see how this turned out. You can see that it made a mess up there, and it wasn't even up there. Just the fibers kind of go everywhere. Okay, so they did cut out everywhere except for just at the very top of the circle. So I'm going to have to snip that a little bit. First, I just want to do broad cuts. Just get it separated from the rest of the suede. Okay, and then you probably won't be able to see this, but I'm going to have to follow along with the curvature where it cut most of the way through. So I'm going to pull that up really close so I can see that. Okay, right now you can see these look to be a real mess. And they are. Most of those fibers will flake off when you do that. Most of them aren't still attached. But once you do that, you see you're going to have a lot running down the edge. And so just like leather, I'm going to trim those off. Now, I don't know. There might be a product for this. I've had people tell me about products for leather. But I don't know with suede if it would do any good, if it would change the color of the sides. So that's just barely taking any time to clean it up. You can see it's much better. I will spend a little bit more time on it, but I don't want to spend time on the video taking up your time to do that. Okay, so for now that's good enough. Let me show you what these are going to look like. Now I went ahead and cleaned up my suede just a little bit more. What I was playing with was if I move the cork over like this, that's a cute look too. But for today I'm going to stick with what I originally set out to do. And I'm going to design them like this. So I'm going to use this hole punch that I got at Harbor Freight. Really inexpensive with a coupon with somewhere around $6. And I'm going to use the smallest hole there is, 564. I want to go ahead and punch the hole in my cork layer. So what you do is you just place your hole punch very gently on there. 
and you leave it very <laughs> gently on there until you get a really good look to make sure that's where you want your hole punched. So I'm going to go ahead and get this close. So I like that. So you just squeeze it together and you can hear it cut through and it leaves a really nice hole. Usually it just falls out when you punch it, but if it doesn't, you can see where it is from the back and just press it out with something. Your weeding tool or the fish hook of an earring. So I'll go ahead and do my second one. Okay. So I'm just going to place my black earring behind it. Make sure one more time I like the look of that. It's harder to do the black suede because the color of my tool is black and the suede is black. So let me pull that out of the camera so I can really look at it. Okay. And then last one. Again, I'll take a good look at that. Okay, so now we are ready to put our hardware in those. I'm going to use one jump ring for each earring. And then I'll have a fish hook for each earring. And actually, because the suede's pretty thick, I don't think that's going to be large enough. I think that's about a four millimeter jump ring. And I'm gonna move up to a six millimeter jump ring for each of those. Now, I really like it when I can just put the loop of the fish hook directly on the earring, but this is so thick that that's not going to work. So I'll use one jump ring each. For these to hang right with just one jump ring though, I'm going to have to turn my the loop of my fish hook 90 degrees. So just grab onto it with some needle nose pliers, and then I just twist both my the top part of it and this part at the same time until it's 95 degrees. And then I try to angle it back so it looks centered over that. That works. So you take your jump ring, find the opening, place your needle nose pliers alongside the jump ring with the opening at the top. Put the jump ring in the smallest slit it'll fit in and twist it towards you. So hopefully you can see we have a nice opening in that jump ring. And we can just place our layers through the loop. Then I always grab on the back side. I kind of have to make sure I'm putting it on correctly. I have messed that up plenty of times before. 
grab as much of that jump ring again as you can over on the right side or if you're left-handed you might be doing it differently then you're going to put the jump ring back into the slit and just twist it back together perfect So I hope you found something that was helpful or inspirational in my video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comments field. And if you'd like to see what I'll be working on in the future, hit the subscribe button. If you'd also like YouTube to notify you when I upload new content, then tap the bell. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Marilyn. Bye-bye.